What tips would the cruise line rather you actually not know? I'm not talking about anything illegal or against the rules, but when you know what I'm about to share, you'll save tons of money, know some of the secrets behind cruising that most people don't know, and do things way differently than the cruise line planned. So let's get to it. If you've taken a cruise to the Caribbean, you know cruise lines are very happy to sell you a drink package. You pay one set price and then you essentially have free run of whatever you want to drink from the bars. Not having to worry about a bar tab is nice, but if you are paying full price for this package, know that it's going to be really tough to get your money's worth. Let's say the drink package is $75 per day before gratuity, like what you see on this Royal Caribbean cruise. The line charges 14 bucks for a cocktail and around $8 for a beer. That means that you have to drink six cocktails every single day of the cruise or 10 beers every single day. On a three day cruise, you might be able to handle that. On a week long trip, however, it's going to be hard to keep that sort of pace up. Then you add in the rules around the drink packages. If you buy the package, then your cabin mate has to get it as well, even if they aren't big drinkers. And you have to buy it for every day of the cruise. So even if you were in port all day, you were still paying for that drink package. Yes, there are always caveats. If you find a good deal or a sale, then the math can work in your favor. And no matter what, some people will definitely get their money's worth. However, for most people, the cost and the rules mean that the math doesn't work in your favor. This next tip is one that may vary from line to line and cruise to cruise, but I've personally used it on my trips. When you book your cruise, you'll be asked to select a boarding time. They use these times to spread people out during the boarding window so that everyone doesn't show up right when boarding opens and creates these massive long lines. What you'll find is that sometimes the time you'd like to arrive is no longer available, or even if you pick a time, it might not match your schedule meaning that you have to just kill an hour or two before you're supposed to arrive to the port. What I'm finding more, at least personally, is that the staff seems to care less and less about your assigned boarding time. To be sure, I've arrived early to port and then had to wait before I could board, but it's been a long time since that's happened. These days, it seems like your boarding time is rarely checked or even asked for. So I'm not telling you to show up way early, but if you do get to the port before your specified time, you'll likely still be able to board right away. Now this one may not be anything that's actionable, but something that I always keep in mind when sailing. It's pretty well known that cruise ships throw out some heavy exhaust, and thankfully they seem to be getting more and more serious by reducing those emissions. But if you do go on the back of the ship, you're still likely going to find what looks like dirt or dark streaks around the deck and the railings. This is coming from the ship's exhaust. In fact, there have been studies done that show the particulate matter in the air can be pretty bad when aft of the exhaust when the ship is underway. Given this study and what I've personally seen with my own eyes, I don't avoid the back of the ship, but I definitely keep it in mind when looking for places to get some sun. I just check to see where the exhaust is blowing and make sure that I'm not spending too much time directly underneath it. Eating is a big part of your cruise, and if you're in the dining room, then one tip is that you can order more than one entree. Cruise lines, they hate food waste and they take steps to reduce it. Not only does it cost the line money, but growing food is a major source of carbon emissions. So reducing food waste can help lessen the overall environmental impact of cruising, which is a concern for the lines. One way to reduce waste is to serve relatively small servings in the dining room. I feel like I'm a pretty average eater on a cruise and even for me, the dishes are on the small side. If you have an appetite, then one tip is that you can order another entree in the dining room. It is sometimes no issue at all, but some lines have started to charge a nominal fee. I'm talking something like five bucks a plate. Still, if you're hungry or you just wanna try a couple of dishes at once, don't be bashful. This also goes for appetizers and desserts. This tip is specifically for those Royal Caribbean fans out there. If you sailed the line, then you likely know that it uses something called dynamic pricing. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying that you can see different prices for items on board, like drink packages or Wi-Fi or admission to the water park on Coco Cay, depending on your specific trip. 
But even then, the price that you pay can vary as the cruise line runs sales and simply seems to change prices here and there. One tip is that the things you buy before the cruise are fully refundable. So what you can do is purchase a package or an item through your account and lock in the price. If you go back later and see that the price has dropped, then you can refund the item and then repurchase it, saving yourself the difference. It is a bit of a pain dealing with multiple transactions, but it's a way to make sure that you get the lowest price available and the cruise line gets to keep less of your money. Every cruise line will have a small sundry shop. In a pinch, it's where you can get a spare toothbrush or Listerine or deodorant or some Tylenol, things like that. I want to tell you to avoid buying here if you can at all. The pricing, it can be just outrageous. I'm talking $18 for a bottle of Dayquil outrageous. Instead, I like to bring a small pharmacy of over-the-counter medicines when I travel. So if I get anything from a toothache to a headache or an upset stomach or a sunburn, I'm covered. It's also nice having this with you in the cabin in case something hits in the middle of the night when the shop is closed. Now, if you do need something and you can wait, then ports of call, they will also have little pharmacies where you can pick anything up that you might need, and they are way cheaper than buying on the ship. One little secret that's not advertised by the cruise lines, but any smart cruise passenger knows, the ships and the fleet are way different based on when they were built. Cruise ships can be in service for up to 30 years. And yes, during the past three decades, there might have been a little bit of an advancement in what's possible on a cruise ship. So you can take the same exact cruise at the same exact time of year with the same cruise line, but on a different ship. And that means that you'll have a completely different experience. And considering how much time is spent on the ship itself during the cruise, the ship that you sail, it makes a huge difference in your vacation. Now, personally, I like the newer and the bigger ships because I like having more things to do with more venues. But a lot of folks, they like those older ships that are typically smaller and frankly, more calm. That's up to you, but just know that cruise lines don't brag about the differences between ships in their fleet. So it is up to you to know the difference. Are you assigned a dinner time? That can actually be a pain. For one, it seems like there are three options, 5.30, 8.30, or anytime dining. If you made me wait until 8.30 every night before dinner, let's just say that I wouldn't be a very fun person to cruise with. Other times, there may be events happening in the evening that conflict with your assigned meal time, such as a show in the theater that you want to see. One tip is that no matter what time you select or the cruise line assigns, you can go eat in the dining room whenever you want. All you have to do is show up and ask to be seated. It's essentially anytime dining, even if you are assigned a time. Now, it may not be as easy as eating at your assigned time. When I do it, sometimes I have to stand by while others are seated first, but you aren't going to be turned away from the dining room. And it may be that the cruise lines would rather you stick to your time to keep things more orderly. For me, I prefer the flexibility. One way the cruise lines make more money is by loading up the ship with balcony cabins. These rooms, they have their own small outdoor space that's relatively private. Passengers like them because they offer light, a view, and fresh air when you want it. Cruise lines love them because they fetch much higher rates. My tip is that yes, balconies, they are great. By all means, if you want it, then get it. But if you're on a short cruise, then frankly, it's just not worth it. Overall, I'm convinced that the vast majority of people spend way less time on the balcony than they think they will. Most people, they just step outside for a few minutes here and there. On a short cruise of four days or fewer, however, that time is going to be even less as you're more likely to be out exploring the ship and in ports of call, trying to pack in as much as you can to the cruise. Five days is a middle ground where you could go either way. Six days or more then yes, spring for the balcony as you will have more downtime to enjoy it. But while the cruise lines might not like it, I tell you to save the money on the shorter cruises. Are you headed on a cruise to a private destination? Every line has these spots and they seem to dominate itineraries, especially if you were sailing from Florida. These areas all have a few things in common. For one, they have beautiful beaches where you can spend literally the entire day. For another, the cruise lines use them as an opportunity to generate more revenue for the business. 
Coco Cay is a big one with beach clubs, a water park, cabanas, and more. And they charge a premium for these items. Now I'm not singling out Coco Cay as you see this in a lot of places. One tip is to use these private island days as free days. You could spend a fortune here if you wanted. Instead, I think they serve as a great way to enjoy the beach and the water without spending a ton of money. Then you can save your money and instead use that for excursions in non-private ports like Nassau, where it's not near as easy and cheap to spend a day unless you do book one of those tours. This is one that I've mentioned in other videos, but everyone needs to know about it in my opinion. Head to any cruise line website and you'll find that, wow, they're running a sale right now. You better take advantage, right? After all, there's a countdown timer, so it's only for a limited time, huh? The cruise lines can't like people pointing it out, but these sales, they run constantly. Sure, after the timer hits zero, the offer may be tweaked slightly and reintroduced, but it's essentially the same deal. In fact, sometimes the offer isn't even tweaked. It's just announced that it's extended. Don't worry about having to hurry up and book due to a sale. Even if it ends, a new one is going to come along and take its place. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned a thing or two that maybe the cruise lines don't really want you to know. For more on everything cruising, you can visit cruisely.com or check out the other videos on this channel. As well, be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, happy sailing.